Allah will forgive all your sins for indeed he's most forgiving, most merciful. But when you fulfill the five daily prayers, we have another issue that people need to be advised about. If I were to ask you who prays five times a day, a lot of hands would go up. But how do you pray? That's a question, right? And the next thing you're down and you're up and you're down and people who are watching and they're like, oh wow, what did you just do, man? You know? When they see you, they should see a calmness, a coolness. Perfect your deeds, perfect your prayer. When you say Allahu Akbar, the brother a little bit earlier was saying, oh, there is a sister, Allahu Akbar. There's a brother, Allahu Akbar. And I'm thinking, you know, if there were non-Muslims hearing the Allahu Akbar, they'd think that you've just been terrorized. Yeah, because they don't even know. Allah is the worshipped one. He's the one who made, the one whom we're going to go back to. He's the only one we put our head on the ground for. So therefore we call him Allah, meaning the worshipped one. When I say Allahu Akbar, I'm actually saying he who made me, he who, you know, he who controls every aspect of my existence, he whom I'm going to go back to when I die is the greatest. That's the meaning of Allahu Akbar. He's the greatest. Whoever made me is indeed the greatest. But with us, I swear, think about it today. How many of us say Allahu Akbar without ever thinking of what it means? Am I right? You start Salah Allahu Akbar. You haven't thought what you said. You, your mind is nowhere near. That's what we want to change. When we say perfect your deeds, we're talking of starting with the Allahu Akbar itself. When you're starting the prayer, you're supposed to think to yourself, Allah is the greatest. That's what you just said. Is he really the greatest according to you? Subhanallah. Then what do you say? Then I start off with my little dua al-istiftah. You know, a little, uh, they call it thana and whatever else we need to read. And we start with Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the world. Subhanallah. So amazing. What powerful words I'm saying. But our deeds, we don't even concentrate. Honestly, we don't. We don't even think of what we're saying. And then we say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful subhanallah imagine how beautiful these words are allah has chosen to call himself lord of the worlds the most beneficent the most merciful owner of the day of judgment you alone we worship you alone we seek help from guide us to the straight path the path of those whom you have favored not the path of those who are astray those who have earned your anger wow or those who are astray and then we say, Ameen. But we don't think about it. We just like, Am I right? We're going to change that. Why? Because we're going to keep trying. We're going to keep trying. I promise you many times we suffer, we struggle and we say, but I'm a Muslim or I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best possible way. I'm trying. Why am I struggling? You know what? Because you just need to concentrate a little bit more. You're not thinking about what you're saying. This is why we say you need something like Iman Academy to be able to help. You need to understand read the books see what's going on see the meaning check it we've been reading this surah al-fatiha for years on end there is no excuse for you not to know its meaning and try and think about it keep trying so people say well i lose concentration it's fine to lose a little bit of concentration keep bringing your mind back keep bringing your mind back Keep bringing it back and you will find a great benefit from it. Subhanallah, because it happens to all of us. My concentration is never 100%, but you keep trying. Sometimes you have concentration to the degree that you won't know whether you read one unit or two. So what do you do? Well, I tell you, it happened way back at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, with some of his companions. <inaudible> the Prophet ﷺ says, if one of you is reading salah, is fulfilling his prayer, and he forgets, he doesn't remember whether he read one or two, so he gives you a solution. What does that mean? It happened already at the time. You're not the first for that to happen to.
Get my point? So don't become despondent. Keep trying. That's it. And Allah loves you with your trial. Allah wants goodness. Allah gets so happy when you turn to him. And when you perfect your deed, do you know what happens? You move from a stage of doing something because you have to do it to a stage of doing something because you want to do it. What a big difference. Those who pray, for example, the duty is what is called farad. I hope you understand that. Your obligation. The obligation, that's your duty. You want to get closer to Allah, well, you've got to add a little bit more to that. You've got to do something yourself now. So if I did my duty, I've done what I have to do or had to do. If I do, if I go beyond that and voluntary, I read much more or fulfill much more. It becomes something I want to do. Imagine you meet someone you really love. And they've given you five minutes of their time. And they enjoy it so much or you enjoy it so much. And you're just sitting for one hour. Wow. And you just, hey, I can't get enough of this. It happens. Well, Allah comes first. Allah comes first. Take your time in Salah. Your life will change. Take your time in prayer. Your life will change. And what's very important is for you to for you to realize, for you and I to realize that everyone out there loves Allah. Every one of us wants to develop a good relationship with Allah. We all do. So stop pointing fingers at others. Because by pointing fingers at others and by looking at what they have been up to you're not looking at yourself you're not able to introspect you're not able to correct yourself because you're bothered about that person's doing this this person's clothing is this way that person's not walking in the right way this person just did that that person just did this no worry about yourself if you want to guide people say it in a good way say it in a lovely way don't make like you're preaching down to them no you're talking across to them you're one of them we're all together by the will of allah we're all trying to perfect ourselves to become better and to earn the help of allah so my message for you today don't become despondent don't think that you know what i'm not getting what allah's promised me you will love your prayer when you read it correctly. When you fulfill it, I swear, the day I get up very early and the day I defy my sleep and wash myself and sit on my prayer mat a little bit earlier than usual, that's the day I feel the spiritual upliftment. I feel so close to my Lord. Subhanallah. I'm sure you agree. And I'm sure there have been days when you have done that too. I'm not the only one. You feel better. But you want to change your life and you're not prepared to change for the positive, your relationship with your maker. I don't think your life's going to change positively. It cannot. And this is why we say, when you do something, do it genuinely. When you give a charity, don't show people. Right, guys, this is a hundred pounds. Take a picture, take a picture, guys. Quickly, quickly. Hundred, hundred, yeah. Come, come. Go on your knees. Go on your knees. Show how sh show me the tatty part of your clothing. Yeah, yeah, there. Take the picture. Okay. My charity. The hadith says a charity that is given in a way that your left hand doesn't know what your right hand has spent is probably the best. It is the best. At times, in order to encourage people, you might want to put up your hand for something because you're encouraging others. Your niya is not to boast and brag. You know, if there are a lot of millionaires here and one guy stands up and says, I give a hundred thousand. Another guy who's a richer guy than him says, he gave a hundred, I'll give 120. Subhanallah. What did you do? You just encouraged the others. You get a reward for your hundred and for his 120. So in those cases, it's okay to do it publicly. No problem. But when we're boasting, bragging, and we, 
when you give a charity, do it with your heart. Give it correctly. Understand those you are giving. This too have been placed by the Almighty. Imagine if they were not there, how were your charities going to be accepted? 